Antigua was once the capital of Guatemala and the most important seat of the Spanish colonial government between Mexico City and Lima, Peru. The country has had several capital changes in its history. The first one was founded in 1524 as Santiago de Guatemala, which is now modern-day Izimche. It was subsequently destroyed by fire caused by an uprising and re-established in 1527, which is now modern-day San Miguel Escobar, a neighboring city of Ciudad Villa. In 1541, the city was once again destroyed, this time by a volcanic eruption, and the capital was moved in 1543 to what is now modern-day Antigua. This location served as the capital for 230 years, before it was once again moved in 1773, after it was destroyed by an earthquake which left most of the city in ruins. The capital was moved to what is now modern-day Guatemala City. It's about 25 miles away from Guat City, and usually takes an hour to get here. Many cities and towns around the world have a small portion of land that it designates a historic district, and they call that district Old Town. But for Antigua, the entire city is Old Town, and it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979. This whole town is filled with beautiful Spanish colonial facade that was inspired by the Italian Renaissance. There are numerous festivals and holidays celebrated in this city throughout the year. Coupled that with pleasant weather, you can visit this place year-round. This city offers something for everyone as it attracts all types of travelers from comfort to adventurous exploration. Most travelers use the city as a jumping off point or headquarters to begin their journey into other parts of the country. It is a welcoming place with high quality services, luxury, and first world amenities. This town is very safe. You can walk alone during the day and at night, but don't make yourself an easy target. Like most urban places around the world, petty crime does happen. But in these parts, most travelers that wander here do it trouble-free. The common modes of transportation here are tuk-tuks, chicken bus, and Uber. Uber rides are safe here. They also offer familiar comfort, but can get stuck in traffic from time to time, as some of the streets are narrow. Tuk-tuks are cheap at only 10 quetzales. A big downside is that it can get pretty bumpy, since most of the streets are made of cobblestone. Chicken bus are also cheap, but I would only recommend it to the most adventurous traveler, as they tend to be late, often stop, and don't take the most direct route. If all else fails, you can walk to your destination, as the city is very walkable. There are plenty of restaurants and rooftop bars to choose from. One of the rooftop bars I recommend is Antigua Brewery Company. It's a local craft beer brewery and a rooftop bar. If you need a place to take a break from wandering, this is the place I recommend. It's usually busy on the weekends, but for most of the week, it has a mellow vibe. It's a great place to hang out if you're with friends, and it's also a great place to meet new people. So if you're a solo traveler or a digital nomad, I definitely would recommend checking this place out, especially if you're going to be in Antigua for a lot longer period of time. If you have a drone, it's also a perfect place to take flight. Regarding cuisine, there are both international and traditional Guatemalan dishes here. From Texas barbecue steak, Japanese food, Italian food, Mexican fusion, and so on. Though I like that they have international options, when I travel, I mostly stick with the country's cuisine. As far as restaurants go, the one I recommend is La Covita de los Arquizu. They serve traditional Guatemalan food. While all the spots I ate at were excellent, this was the most memorable. It was also around the corner from my Airbnb. A dish I recommend trying is papien, as it is considered Guatemala's national dish. It's a fusion of flavors of both Mayan and Spanish culture. You can find lodging for most budgets, but being a tourist destination, it's quite more expensive compared to other parts of the country. And the closer you stay in the center of the city, the more expensive. There are many historical edifices, churches, and ruins throughout the entire city. One of these spots is the famous Santa Catalina Arc. You can wander solo, go on a self-guided tour, or join a free walking tour of the city. 
You can find more information at freetour.com for the meetup points. If you're keen on exploring solo, the following are some of the points of interest you should check out. As you wander around, be sure to visit the local artisan markets. Bartering is a common practice at local markets around the country. Just do it respectfully and know that this is the way they make a living. I would also advise you to carry small denominations of bills as you're not stuck in an awkward situation handing over a huge bill after bartering. And don't just barter and talk numbers, but also get to know the artist and how long it took them to make their work. Being friendly, even with minimal Spanish, also goes a long way. So my name is Benjamin. So I live uh, from uh, from here, but uh, my really country I come from uh, three three hours too far here, and then, um, so I come every day right here, and then uh, I sell these things with uh, from uh, family, and uh, that's what I'm doing for myself. This is uh, like some like reporter. Uh -huh. This is like a drone. This is like a drum. It's same like drum. Uh, depends about like for uh, size. When I got from a big, uh, like like this different song. Like this is like thin skin song. And then um, this I make like uh, five hours to make making. I speak English, but not uh, not some well, man. Like I'm. I have uh, my, ne my nether language. I have my nether language uh, the name Kakchiko. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to United States from uh, 2002. I'm going in for uh, United States. And then uh, I come back to Guatemala for 2010. So I've been to eight years old. And, uh, I'm tired with the pandemic, man, because uh, Everybody uh, tours when starting from a pandemic, like uh, nothing for nothing uh, tour we've been to uh, from Antigua because it's, it's hard, hard. Not that many, many tours, not the, uh, mm. no, no opportunity for some job or somebody. Like everybody, people say like me, like like hard. Man. Okay. Before you can make like little bit money. You can uh, you can uh, make more money, you know, like because right now it's uh, like slow, slow. Man. Do you think it's safe uh, here in uh, Guatemala? Is it? Everybody say like from Guatemala, it's uh, not safe, but uh, come, come, yeah. and then they visit it because right here is safe. Dependent for people, right? Because uh, when you come down, people like like you. I think it's right here it's safe because everybody in Guatemala is dangerous but right here it's safe. In proximity lies the dormant giant Volcan de Agua. It towers over the city at 12,340 feet or 3,760 meters. Its last activity was 80,000 to 100,000 years ago and it hasn't erupted since. The best view of Agua is to hike up Serra de la Cruz. You may come across other hikes and trails with the same name around the country, as the phrase translates to Hill of the Cross. While Serra de la Cruz is used as a generic term of a literal cross up a hilltop or a mountain, this is the Serra de la Cruz in Guatemala. The viewing point is open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and is about a 20 to 30 minute hike with about a 377 feet elevation gain. While the hike itself isn't strenuous, it does get your heart pumping. You can also opt to journey to the top by ATVs, which takes about 15 minutes. A few things to note, there are usually a couple of law enforcement patrolling the top for safety. There is no entrance fee to hike up, 
There are a couple of vendors at the top selling snacks and water, and you do get decent cell service up here. This hilltop gives you a vantage point of the city and the looming giant that overlooks it in the distance. The view of the top is truly breathtaking and should be on your bucket list. A 25 minute Uber ride right out of the city is Alta Amira in Habatanengo. Both are eco parks, with Alta Amira being the newest of the two, and Habitanengo being a Lord of the Rings themed eco park. I initially planned on going to Habitanengo, but after exploring Alta Amira, I was quite exhausted and decided to head back after. Because of this, I can only give you my experience of Alta Amira, but would incline you to research Habitanengo if you're in the area. It costs 50 quetzales to enter Habitanengo. Alta Amira, on the other hand, you can walk to. It is a bit of a hike to the entrance and is very hilly, so I suggest packing light. Make sure to bring your essentials such as water, hat, sunglasses, and a raincoat. While walking, you'll encounter small villages along the way. The most important thing to pack is water. There are several food vendors and shop stands in case you forget to bring water or you run out. This is the entrance to the park. The cover charge for Altamira is 25 quetzales. The park is situated on a hill, so you'll be walking up and down and working up a sweat. The park is a charming place and is an ecological park full of spots to take beautiful photos. There are two wooden hands that you can walk on and take photos from. One is right at the entrance of the park next to the restaurant. The other is further down the hill. So don't get too caught up on the first hand, especially if there's a long line to take photos. There is a restaurant inside the park. The food was good, but nothing special. Would I go here for the food? Probably not. It's a long trek and cost quite a bit just getting here. But this place wasn't built for the food, but for the scenery. And the scenery is majestic. On a clear day, you'll see two volcanoes in the distance. But unfortunately, the skies remain cloudy during my visit. Working your way down the park is a breeze, but just know there's only one way back. So the further you go down, the higher you have to walk back up, but the views are worth it. After you've passed all the restaurants and bars, you'll reach a clearing. This is Jeffrey the Giant. You can walk onto his hand to get a better view of the landscape. Be sure to watch your step as you go through the park and onto these art installations as you can slip and fall. I would also be cautious visiting this place during the rain or right after, as it can get slippery. As you go further down the trail, you'll encounter another wooden giant and an airplane situated on a hill. These wooden giants and the airplane on top of the hill is my number one reason why this place is worth going to. Antigua is situated between a few volcanoes and engulfed by dense vegetation. Here you can witness all of it in all its glory. 